Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today, I'm going to be sharing my very favorite makeup products in every single category. Well, almost every single category, everything except for lips, because if you know anything about me, you know that I am obsessed with lip products, so much so that I decided to film an entire separate favorites video just dedicated to lips. So that has already gone up. I will list it in my description box below. I cover so many different lip product categories in that video, like lip line liner, sheer lipsticks, full pigment lipsticks, balms, treatments, masks, oils, you name it. I've got it covered in that video. Check it out below. But today is going to be focused on all of the other makeup categories. So we're going to cover things like primer, skin tints, cream and powder, blush and bronzer, highlight, mascara, other eye products, etc. And I wanted to film this now because there have been so, so many exciting new launches in I feel like almost every makeup category lately. And I have been testing out a lot of those and been loving a lot of them but because they are newer, I feel like I can't consider them to be my current all-time favorites. Like they're just a little bit too new for that. So I felt like this would be a good place to kind of stop, level set, share all of the products that I have been obsessed with over, you know, the past few months up to a year or for some even longer than that because I'm constantly asked what makeup products I'm actually using in my everyday routine. And then moving forward, I can start to share some of those newer products that I know a lot of people are curious about as well. So let's jump right into it. All right, we are going to talk about these products in order of application, which means that we are starting off with primer. And I know that in the past, I have definitely shared that I just don't really think primer is that necessary. I think that there was one video where I was talking about oh, what was it? Like my, not controversial, but like my hot takes when it came to beauty. And in that video, I was saying, if your complexion product is good enough, you shouldn't need a primer. And I still stand by that. Like ideally we shouldn't need primer. The complexion product should be able to do what we want it to do. However, I feel like primers have just been all the rage over the past year. And I was like, you know what? I wanna see what all the hype is about with some of these viral primers that people seem to be so obsessed with. So I have been testing them out behind the scenes and I get it. Well, of course it would be ideal to have a complexion product that doesn't require a primer. And I will say my favorite complexion products that I'm going to share in this video don't need primers. However, I can understand that not every complexion product is going to do every single thing in the way that you want it to do. And because of that, there are certain primers that are really helpful. I kind of just like achieving a little bit more. Okay, I felt like I had to clear that up because I didn't want you guys to be like, wait a minute, what? So with all of that being said, the first of my two favorite primers is the Milk Hydro Grit Primer, which has been well loved for a long time and I completely understand why. I really love the fact that this is super lightweight and gel-like and hydrating and it does not mess up my skincare underneath it. That is definitely a must for me, of course. If I have to choose between a primer and skincare, I'm obviously choosing skincare. So in order for me to use a primer, it has to be something that I can layer on top of all of the other skincare products that I am using. And this works great for that. It is not something that for me really changes anything about my complexion at all. What it does do is just grip onto what I'm putting on top of it and really help my makeup to last longer. While I don't have an issue with longevity when it comes to my favorite complexion products like skin tints and things like that, I can have that issue with a lot of cream products, cream bronzer, cream blush. And so I find that having this underneath really helps those products to last longer and not kind of like break up or go patchy on my skin. The other product that I have been really, really impressed with, kind of surprisingly, because I don't know why, I just like didn't think that this was gonna do much for me. It is the Cali Ray So Blown Clean Blurring Primer. This is also very lightweight, hydrating, kind of gel-like, but it has more of that silicone feel to it than the Milk Primer. That one doesn't feel like a silicone based primer at all. This has a little bit more of that slip, but not nearly as much as something like Benefit. What is that called? Professional? I feel like I've said that a million times in previous videos and I just blacked out. Feels way nicer to me than that. I feel like that product, I just always remember it feeling a bit suffocating and this does not. And unlike the Milk Primer, this is something that does change what my complexion looks like because it actually 
blurs the skin. So it's really great if you have large pores, if you're trying to kind of minimize the appearance of texture. I have just really been applying this in my T-zone, which I would say is the main area that I am prone to my pores looking a little bit bigger. It's not something I have a huge issue with, but of course I've been wanting to test it out where it's actually going to make a difference. So like around here, forehead, around my chin and I love it. I think it looks beautiful. It really does just help to create a diffused look. Even if you don't deal with large pores, I just, I love that like airbrush diffused look it gives to the skin. And I'm actually able to use these two products together. So I will apply milk first, then go in with a little bit of Cali Ray in the T-zone, then go ahead with my complexion. <laughs> what? Complexion products. King. I am definitely going to be testing out way more in the primer category, so stay tuned for a showdown in the future, and let me know in the comments below if there are any primers that you would like me to include in that video. Let's move on to skin tints. There's really nothing new here, and this is actually the only complexion product category, aside from like primer and concealer, that I'm going to be including in this video. I was thinking about including foundations, but I was like, I barely wear foundations anymore. These are the only two products that I have been wearing. First is something that I am going to breeze right by. It is the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. And the reason why I'm breezing past it is because I've talked about it 5 million times. This has been a favorite on my channel and in my real life. I mean, my channel is my real life, but you have been seeing me talk about this as a favorite on this channel for well over a year at this point. So I feel like I don't need to dive into everything again, but I I mean, if we're doing a favorites video, I can't not mention this because it is a favorite, holy grail, amazing. The other product that I have been reaching for constantly, even more so than the L'Oreal skin tint lately, is the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Skin Tint. This, I will say, is incredibly similar to the L'Oreal skin tint. If you already have that, I don't think that you need to run out and purchase this unless you are somebody that loves to collect makeup and does notice the slight difference differences in products. I did do a video where I compared these two products. I did a split face wear test. I show you application, what they look like up close and how they wear after a full day. So if you want to hear more details on how these two products are similar and how they vary and you want to see them up close in action, I will list that below, but I'll say high level. The reason why I've been reaching for this so much lately is because I am obsessed with the glow that it gives my skin. I do feel like there's a little bit more of a glow than L'Oreal. But other than these two, there's really not been much going on my skin in that sense lately. So let's move on to concealer. I only have one product to share for this category. And again, it's a product that I have been talking about for a long time at this point. It is the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. This is a creamier concealer that at first glance you would assume would be something that might feel heavy or settle into lines easily or crease. But on me personally, it does not do any of those things. If I just apply a little bit of product, I find that it looks absolutely beautiful, very skin-like. It is a nice medium coverage concealer. And the wear with this is amazing. I don't deal with, you know, any weird patchiness or creasing or anything like that. It's just something that I know I can rely on. However, I feel like concealer is the category that out of all makeup categories has had the most new exciting launches lately. And I have been playing around with those behind the scenes and I will be doing a showdown on all of the new hyped up concealers. So if you're looking for something new, if you want to see how things like Tower 28, House Labs, Makeup by Mario compare to that Dior concealer, stay tuned. It's coming for you. For powder, also really nothing new here. I promise that there will be some things in this video that are not like completely how would I even say that? Like, I understand that there are some products so far that are products that I've talked about a million times. What did I just do with my hands there? And not every single product is like that, but for powder, same two favorites, my e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder, which is the powder that I reach for when I want something that is a little bit more luminous on the skin. Of course, this is not super glowy. Well, I guess I don't need to say of course because it's called Halo Glow. So if you were wondering if this is something that looks really like illuminating and radiant with like a highlightery effect on the skin, it does not. However, it's something that does just have a little bit more luminance to it than something like the Sigma Soft Focus Setting Powder, 
which is a little bit more of a soft matte diffused look. But aside from the finish, I would say that both of these powders do an equally amazing job setting my makeup and helping my makeup to last all day without them starting to feel dry and tight on my skin. I've been playing around with a lot of different setting powders over the past few months, specifically Patrick Star, Huda Beauty. I feel like those are the two big ones that I've really been testing out. And while they do such a good job of setting and helping with makeup longevity, both of them do start to feel a little bit drier on my skin as the day goes on. And neither of these powders do that to me. Let's jump over to cream bronzer next. The first of my two favorites in this category is the Rare Beauty Bronzing Stick. This has an extra smooth, creamy texture, but it dries down to feel completely weightless. So it's not something that stays feeling heavy and creamy on the skin, which is great. In terms of pigmentation, I would say that this is medium to full coverage and this has a natural matte finish. Also, I feel like it goes without saying that all of these products are products that apply really nicely and blend beautifully and look nice on the skin and last a long time. So I don't want to repeat that for every single product category. Just know that these all do all of those things or they wouldn't be favorites. And the other cream bronzer that I have been reaching for constantly is also a stick. It is the Nudies Matte All Over Face Bronze Color. This is also very creamy and does dry down nicely. However, I will say that Rare Beauty feels a little bit more traceless on the skin, but like not by much. This is still something that dries down and feels very lightweight to me. I don't feel it sitting on my skin, but when I'm being nitpicky and comparing the two, if you need a cream bronzer to feel like you basically have nothing on, I would go for Rare Beauty, but still this is so beautiful. It has a satin matte finish, so it's something that I think looks a little bit more skin-like, also because it has light to medium coverage. So this is going to be for those of you that want a cream bronzer that's a little bit more natural looking and Rare Beauty will be for you if you want that full coverage moment. Also, if you're wondering the shades that I wear, I will list all of them in the description box below, including variations in my pale shades and my self-tan shades. For powder bronzer, I am still loving the Sephora Micro Smooth Multitasking Baked Face Powder. This is something that I picked up on a whim during a Sephora VIB sale, and I am so, so glad that I did. It's not technically a bronzer, but it works beautifully for that purpose. I find that baked powders like this apply bronzer so nicely, or dark colors that you use as bronzer. They just look more diffused and more natural, and they're like in pigment, so they're not gonna look really intense or patchy. I'm just obsessed with this and I cannot believe it's affordable. The less affordable bronzer that I have also been loving is from Hourglass. I feel like I have been testing out more and more Hourglass face products and I've been impressed by everything. Their formulations are stunning. And this bronzer is no exception to that. This is called the Ambient Lighting Bronzer and it looks absolutely beautiful on the skin. All of their complexion products products are lighter in pigment, but buildable. And again, similar to that Sephora powder, I find that that allows you to achieve the most skin-like look. And what I really love about all of Hourglass's powder products, like bronzer, blush, highlight, is that they don't have a ton of pigment, but they are buildable. And similar to what I was saying about that Sephora powder, I feel like that just allows you to get a more natural look. It looks more like skin. It doesn't look like you're wearing heavy amounts of makeup. And that is just something that I have really been grabbing gravitating towards lately. And even though I still love glam, like you guys know that, don't get me wrong, I love getting all glammed up, but the way that I do that is definitely very different from the way that I did it five years ago when I was going for things that were more intensely full coverage and pigmented and just like really makeup-y. So if you are somebody that's looking for a product that just gives you more of that soft diffused look, check this bronzer out. It is a delight. I don't know why I said that. For liquid slash cream blush, I have two products that I have been loyal to for a while. First is the NARS liquid blush in the shade Orgasm. This is absolutely perfect. And I don't say that lightly, but I have tried so many creams, stick, putty, liquid. What other kind of blush can you have? Like when it comes to things that are not powder blush, I have tried so many and this stays at the top. It's extremely liquidy and lightweight and has that like runny consistency, but as you start to blend it into the skin, it almost kind of turns from a liquid to a liquid powder. The pigment is very buildable, so you can get medium coverage with it all the way up to very, very full coverage, depending on what you're looking for. And the actual like 
The finish itself is technically matte. However, there is this pearlescent sheen in it. It's like this golden sheen that just makes the blush look beautifully radiant and healthy on the skin. It doesn't look like highlighter. It doesn't even look like a blush lighter. It just brings it to life so that it doesn't look dry and matte. And the lasting power of this, insane. My other favorite is the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in the shade Encourage. This is definitely thicker and creamier than NARS, and similar to NARS, I would say that it is also buildable, but it's more pigmented right off the bat. So this is definitely going to get you full pigment, full coverage if you want it to. If you do not want it to, I'm sure most of you guys know you have to be very careful to use the tiniest amount of product, and then you can sheer it out a little bit more so it's not too intense. When this is built up to have more pigment. I definitely do think it looks dewy. This is the dewy finish of this blush. They also have a matte finish, but when I sheer it out a bit, I feel like it just looks more luminous and not overly wet, which I really love. And this also lasts forever. Let's jump over to powder blush next. First up is the Pat McGrath Labs Blush Without Caution in the shade... Wait, what? Oh my gosh. It says Pat McGrath Labs Blush Without Caution. Fabulous, flirtatious, and sexquisite seductions. What? This is her blush in Divine Rose, and <sighs> these blushes are just perfect. I am really picky when it comes to blush. I mean, there are tons of blushes that I'll wear and love, but when it comes to being like, this is a top tier blush and like set apart from other blushes that I own, I'm very picky. Because there are some blushes that yes, have really pretty colors and finishes, but don't quite sink into your skin the same way as others that I consider to be again, top tier, like this one from Pat McGrath. The way that this settles into my skin is just beautiful. So at first it definitely has a matte finish, but then as it settles, I would say it's more of a satin matte. It just, it looks so gorgeous. It's another product that is very buildable in terms of pigment. You can go lighter all the way up to full coverage. This shade is to die for, but... <laughs> Oh my God. I clearly am obsessed with this product because I have three other shades as well. And these are all also stunning. They're just not my number one favorite. I definitely reach for Divine Rose the most, but Nymphette, this is like the powder version of, well, no, I was going to say it's like the powder version of Orgasm, but it's not as like peachy as that one. So pretty. Similar kind of vibe. Flirtatious is more of a beige color, which is something that I really love. If I don't feel like having pink all over my cheeks, I'll reach for that. But if I do, then I reach for this one. This is in the shade Cherish and it's oh, just such a pretty pop of pink. Second is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush. And my number one favorite shade is Mood Exposure. This is just more of like a neutral pink. I find it to be very flattering on my skin tone, but again, similar to Pat McGrath, there are tons of shades that I love in this range. I also have the shade Sublime Flush, which is just such a fun pink. And I would say that everything that I said about the bronzer also holds true for these blushes. They are not too pigmented. They're very buildable. They just have this soft, diffused look on the cheeks. Oh my goodness. And last but not least is a newer launch for sure, but one one that I just instantly fell in love with and have not been able to stop wearing since. It is the Givenchy, Givenchy beats me, Prism Libre Blush in the shade Taffeta Rose. So if you are not super familiar with these blushes, they came out with multiple shades and each one is separated into four quadrants and each quadrant has a different shade. So you just kind of like shake it because it's a loose blush and then all of those pigments will mix together to give you the final shade. What bothers me about this is that I can't use those shades individually. I'm not sure why they decided against that, but I feel like that would make this blush just like next level and so much more worth it for people that think that this is way too much money to be spending on makeup. Like I feel like that would make it more reasonable for people because they could get so many different colors within one. So that is my one complaint about this blush, but it's my one complaint because everything else about it is beautiful. I love the color. I love the way that this applies. It's definitely the most pigmented out of the three. So if you don't want more pigment, I would stay away from this, but even still, it's not too intense for me. I would say it has more of like a natural matte finish and this lasts forever. Oh my God. Probably one of the longest lasting blushes I have ever tried. And even though this, you know, isn't like super, super glowy, something again about the way that this meshes into my skin 
design is just gorgeous. And one of the first times that I wore this, I had somebody come up to me in Sephora and be like, what is on your cheeks? That is so pretty. So I got out of line and ran over and showed it to her, obviously, because I was like, you need it, it's worth it. All right, one more blush category <laughs> is a category that I would say, I'm sorry, I keep playing with my hair. I just like, I don't know what's going on. This is a category that I would say is newer to me and a newer love to me this year. I have definitely tried blush lighters in the past, but something about blush lighters this year have just, I don't know, done something to me. So I have three that I wanted to share. First is the RMS Beauty Redimension Hydra Powder Blush. I have the shade French Rose, which is such a beautiful pink. And even though this is something that like when swatched like this looks too intense and too highlightery, when you apply this with a blush brush, it's not at all. It just gives it the most beautiful glow on the cheeks without it looking shimmery or overly highlighty whatsoever. It's actually something that is very buildable. It's not overly pigmented. It's just stunning. I literally want every single shade. I am addicted. This is not technically a blush lighter. It is the House Labs Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlighter in the shade Rose Quartz, but I absolutely love it as a blush lighter and actually as a blush blush topper on a more matte blush. So for example, I'll put on something like the Givenchy blush and then lay this on top for some extra glow and oh my God, it looks good. I just find this really like light kind of frostier pink shade to be so, so cute and flattering if you just like put a tiny bit on. I feel like it just makes any blush look fresh, you know? And last is the Iconic London Multi-Use Cheek Glow in the shade Kissed by the Sun. This is absolutely beautiful. I never see anybody talking about this and I don't understand why because, oh my gosh. So this is something that feels more like a putty, but I'm actually able to apply this with a regular blush brush. And when I do, I feel like I just get the most gorgeous, diffused, glowy looking blush. I'm actually wearing it today. You can also apply this with a brush that you would use for a liquid or cream blush. And I feel like in that way, it just looks a little bit more pigmented. So up to you on how you want to apply apply this either way. I think the result is stunning and I really hope they come out with more shades because right now they only have three and I would like to see more. For highlighter, what just happened in the back of my throat? A product I am not going to spend time on is the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. This is in the shade One Universal and it's just, it's my favorite highlighting palette of all time. This is going to be for you if you want a highlight that just looks like glassy and mirrory on the skin. I mean, I was gonna say without being too intense, if you want like a super, super bright highlight, you can achieve that with this. You'll just layer it up a bit. But if you want that glassy look in a more natural way, then you can also get that with this. You'll just kind of like, you know, dab it out, apply less product. These two shades are definitely my favorite, but I'll often mix these three. This also makes for a beautiful eyeshadow. So good. And for a more natural, diffuse looking highlight, this, is an old, old product. This is actually from MAC, which, you know what? I feel like MAC is something that nobody talks about anymore. It's very overlooked, very just people are over it. And I feel like it's just because they haven't really updated to be more modern, but they have so many incredible products. I swear if they like pretended like they were getting rid of MAC, but then launched this new brand with the exact same products, just different packaging, different name, made it more modern looking, everyone would be obsessed. I swear, that's my hot take. So, oh my goodness, this is just like an OG in the OG YouTube days. It is the Mineralized Skin Finish in Soft and Gentle. I'm sure some of you are gonna be like, girl, what? That's literally from like 2011, but I never tried this when it was popular. I hadn't tried it until I would say the past couple of months, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is better than everything. Like, there have just been so many highlighter launches that have been very intense highlighters, and while that's super fun, I feel like it's been harder to come by something that gives you more of that natural look. So if you are familiar, what? If you are familiar with the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter or like the Hourglass Ambient, I don't think they're actually called highlighters, the Hourglass Ambient Powders. This reminds me of that, but gives you a little bit more ability to add a 
bit more brightness. And Essence Pure Nude is just a little bit too light for me when I have self tan on, so soft and gentle is what I've been reaching for. Okay, I know why I'm touching my hair. It's because I'm sweating so much. I feel like my AC is not on. All right, we are coming to the end here. We only have eye categories left. Let's start off with eyeshadow. You know the drill. The Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette is just my go-to for an everyday look. It's something that I will use when I want just like a little wash of color and then a powder brown liner, which is basically every single day. So I will use the lighter shades to lay down a tiny bit of color all over my lid. I'll use the deeper browns to do a winged liner. I mean, you can't get, well, I was gonna say you can't get better, but maybe. I did recently purchase the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 2, 3, my bad, matte eyeshadow palette, and I am not including it in this video because I've only used it a handful of times. Open! But I specifically bought it to see if I would like it better than this one from Makeup by Mario, given that these are the only types of eyeshadows I put on my eyes these days. So stay tuned for my thoughts on that, but for now, you can't go wrong. If you are somebody that doesn't even want a palette, but just want something that you can throw all over your lid up to your brow bone and have it add just like the littlest bit of dimension. I have two different product options for you. The first is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector. This is certainly not meant to be an eyeshadow, but I certainly love to use it that way. The reason why I love this so much is because there are three different shades in it, and I think they have at least four different shades total. So this one is light medium. They have others as well if you need something lighter or darker for your complexion. But you can either use these colors individually or mix them together and I find that they make for really beautiful eyeshadows because they're not overly pigmented and they have some glitter mixed in so it just gives you more of like a again diffused kind of look. This is a newer launch and it is the makeup by no makeup forever excuse me artist sculpt powder in the shade precious latte. So this is actually supposed to be a contouring slash bronzing powder but when I saw it I was like wait that looks like the perfect light brown for all over my lid, and it is. It's a really nice soft powder with a natural matte finish. This one does not have any sort of glitter in it, so if you want completely matte, no luminosity, this will be for you. And I also thought it would make for a nice two-in-one. I'm definitely going to use this as a bronzer when I'm pale and don't have self-tan on, because I feel like this shade will be perfect. But for now, as eyeshadow, it's great. I have one more product I wanted to throw into the eyeshadow category, but it's really more of an eyeshadow topper. It is the Makeup by Mario Master Crystal Reflector in the shade Quartz. This is really as like glittery as it gets for me when it comes to eyeshadow. I am never putting on metallic or extra shimmery eyeshadows anymore, but I will do something like this where it is a sheer topper with like a wash of glitter and it just creates that kind of glassy, sparkly look, but doesn't make it look like you're wearing a ton of eyeshadow. Like it's a more natural way to do glitter and it's just so beautiful. I think it's perfect for glam looks, but you could also throw this on for an everyday look and it wouldn't look like too much. For Eyeliner, I only have two products to share. Well, I guess technically that Makeup by Mario palette is an option as well. That's something that I love to use for eyeliner, but if you are looking for just a single product, I absolutely love this Makeup Forever shadow. This is in the shade M631. It's just a perfect neutral brown for creating eyeliner, winged liner, whatever you wanna use it for. I know this obviously isn't technically eyeliner, but you guys know I'm a powder slash shadow liner girl. The other eyeliner is one that I like to use on my waterline. This is the Flower Beauty Forever Wear Eyeliner in the shade Moonstone. This is a really gorgeous creamy beige eyeliner and I find that this looks so much more flattering on my eyes than a really bright white liner. I know it's been super trendy, but I feel like that is just something that looks too intense for me and this just looks more natural, more wearable, but still gives me that pop and makes my eyes look nice and bright and awake. For eyebrows, I do have my eyebrows microbladed now, so I don't need to fill them in as much as I used to. However, I do still have to kind of touch up, I would say from like the middle to the tail end of my brow, but I still used these before I got my brows microbladed and was obsessed with them then. All of my brow favorites are from Benefit. First is the Goof Proof Brow Pencil. This is something that is thicker and angled and just makes it really easy to throw down color. If you want a more precise brow, pencil, then the Precisely My Brow Pencil will be for you. This is like a micro brow pencil. And this is great if you're looking to throw down 
throw down. Why am I so aggressive with that? If you're looking for something that will add more natural looking brow strokes, so good. And their 24 hour brow setter is just undefeated for me right now. I have yet to find a brow setter that lasts as long as this one does and holds my brows in place as long. But I do have to apply two coats of this if I want to brush my brows up. Just one coat doesn't hold them there. So I'll do a coat, let it dry a little bit, then go in with one more and then they'll stay. And last, is mascara. Maybelline Lash Sensational is still here in this video and a newer favorite for me but one that I have also mentioned before is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara in the shade, is it chocolate or brown? I think it's better than sex chocolate but it's a brown mascara and I think that this is beautiful for a more natural look. Also sorry about this sun in my face, I hope that's not distracting. But a lash product that I have not talked about yet is this Lancome Lash Primer. I have been obsessed with this the difference that this makes in my lashes is absolutely insane. I used to use lash primers like back in college, I feel like, and then I don't know why, I just kind of gradually stopped. So I started using this and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot the difference that a good lash primer can make in your lashes. And I feel like this just like immediately doubles whatever I put on top of it. So much so that I don't need to layer mascaras anymore if I am using this first. Like you guys know, I always used to pair this with L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I don't need that if I'm using this. It is fabulous. I will say that I do have some mascara showdowns in the works. The first is for higher end mascaras that have newly launched or have been really hyped up and the second is for tubing mascaras. So we'll see if Maybelline Lash Sensational gets officially replaced after either of those videos, but she's clinging on for dear life, you know? So far I have not been able to get rid of her. All right, you guys, oh my goodness. We're gonna wrap up this video here. That was a lot to talk through, but I felt like it would be most helpful to just have everything all in one video so that I can direct people to this video when I'm asked what my favorites are. And again, I apologize if some of these things felt repetitive for those of you that are loyal viewers. If that's the case, I love you guys so much, but there are a lot of people who aren't, who are just finding me that want to know what my everyday favorites are. So I wanted to make this video for all of those people who don't know yet, like some of you guys do. Everything as always will be listed and linked in order of mention in my description box below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are you going to pick any of these products up? Are any of these your favorites? Are there products that you love that I didn't talk about that I need to try? And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell, and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. Bye.